Hi, Dr. Bob Bianchi, critical art historian. If you've been following me, and I hope you have, um, you'll know that we're looking at another ancient Egyptian funerary stella. The point that I want to emphasize about funerary stella in ancient Egypt in general is that various locations created a model or a template so that during a certain period of time, almost every stella created at that particular location conforms more or less with variation to that same model or that same template. Now, this particular stella was created at a site known either as Komabu Bilo or Terranuthis. Modern name is El Tarana. It also is in the district of Mefkat, about 62 kilometers northwest of modern Cairo. Now, the template or model to which almost all of the Komabu Bilo Terranuthis stella conform rely on the principal decoration being the deceased on a cline with generally an image of a jackal, the god Anubis, here um, in the field in front of his face. And there are numerous examples in museums and collections worldwide that have this motif. So once you recognize it and you go into a museum or a collection, you'll be able to say to yourself, aha, that's a comb Abu Bilo Stili. And here's another example to prove the point. The deceased is represented in a temple-like structure. Notice that the temple facade is indicated by two papyrus umbel columns. The top of the column is supported by what is known as an impost block. That impost block supports the architrave which is the two horizontal elements that you see on top of the impost block. And then you have the triangular pediment and the corners and top of the pediment are decorated by triangular elements, which are called acroteria. And within that temple structure, we have the deceased wearing a Roman toga he is holding in his hand a patera, an open dish used for libations, and he is reclining Roman-like on a cline. Notice that the cline has a wonderful cushion-like mattress under his feet. It has a bolster with an armrest on which he places his elbow. A cline is a word that we can define as a couch. In the Greek world, it was used primarily during symposia, um, Greek drinking parties. And here, in the painted scene within a coffin from the tomb of the diver in the Museum of Pestum, we see a symposiast who's playing a stringed instrument on a cline, and the cline has its couch and its bolster. And the cleany was also used in a Roman context as a funerary couch. And we know that because we have numerous examples from Palmyra all the way to Rome. And there's a curious example in the Greco-Roman Museum in Alexandria, where the deceased is shown uh, sitting as if he's on a cleane, but he is the deceased that is on top of the lid of his sarcophagus. The funerary nature of the stella is represented by the jackal that you see here looking out at us frontally. The jackal represents the Egyptian deity Anubis, god of embalming. Underneath the cline is a relief representation with three figures. To the right, an individual with an arm raised in adoration. The short kilt suggests it is a male figure. In the center of the relief at the bottom is a vase about which we'll have more to say. 
And then in the left-hand side is a figure of a griffin representing Nemesis, one paw raised on the wheel of fate. This particular example is basically unique. I know of virtually no other parallels. And that is because it is decorated on two sides. The side we've been discussing is in bold relief, representing the deceased on a cleanie. And now, if you turn the Stella around, bear with me. We see a second side decorated in a more simplified sunk relief style. The second side of the Stella is very important because it shows us a typical Egyptian temple created in Egypt during the Roman Imperial period. We look at the temple from the facade or front. It is fronted by a set staircase, and you can see that they've shown the balustrade rectangularly to the left and to the right. And on the stylobate or platform are the two columns, papyriform, you see one there, you see the papyriform column here, and they are topped by an impost block, and they support a round pediment. And we have to imagine that the doors of this temple have been opened so that we can look at the interior. And the interior contains a cult statue of the goddess Athena. She is identifiable by the fact that she holds a lance or spear in her upraised hand and has a shield resting against her foot. She also wears a characteristic helmet. It is important to remember that this particular image of Athena is the artist's rendition of the famous gold and ivory statue of the goddess that served as her cult image created by the Greek sculptor Phidias around 450 BC and erected within the cella of the Parthenon on the Acropolis at Athens. And what is perhaps the most interesting aspect of the decoration of the temple is the fact that the columns themselves are flanked by these wonderful tendrils. I think you can see them on both sides, reinforcing the message of the imagery. So now it's time to unpack all of this imagery. In the Roman Imperial period, the deceased was represented in Coma Bilostella as if he were a Roman dead person on a cline, which we are supposed to imagine or envision is similar to being on top of his sarcophagus lid, as we saw in the example in Alexandria. And we know that he is deceased because he's accompanied by the jackal god. And the jackal god extraordinarily peers out at the audience as if to emphasize the fact that the deceased is dead and Anubis has taken care of him. And the deceased is deified because he is represented reclining in a temple. And the bottom register that you see here has a individual, raised arm, paying homage to the deceased. In the center, we have a vase. The vase probably contains water or is supposed to contain water for the benefit of the deceased. And then we have the curious image of Nemesis and the Griffin. And I wanna stop for a moment and show you a better image of this particular deity. And Nemesis 
is associated with the Egyptian goddess Neith, Now we want to put all of this together. Um, the stella commemorates the successful deification of the deceased in the hereafter because we see him in a temple setting accompanied by the god Anubis. And the image of Nemesis reinforces that because the role of Nemesis is neither to reward nor punish. Nemesis' role is to apportion to the deceased in accordance with the way that individual lived his or her life. So if you conducted yourself in a moral, ethical, upright fashion, Nemesis would be sure that you were compensated in the hereafter accordingly. And if you lived your life as a despicable human being, the nemesis would make sure that you paid the price. And because the griffin nemesis is associated with Neith, and because Neith has been identified with the goddess Athena, the entire back of the stella the entire front of the stella finds its correspondence with the reverse, and again bear with me, because the reverse has the image of the goddess Athena, and we remember the floral motifs, vegetation being a very, very important part of the funerary cult connoting resurrection, and this is the temple in which Athena is seen open, welcoming the deceased. She hasn't cut the door, slammed the door in his face. And so what we have here is a wonderful, wonderful blending of Roman ideas of the afterlife, Egyptian ideas of the afterlife, a moving together of both traditions, and the inscription on the bottom is very, very damaged. First line contains the name of the deceased. Only the beginning letters are visible. Ariti, and then it breaks off. And the second line, uh, which is very, very broken, but we know from parallels in other Terranuthis stella, that um, it contained the age of the deceased at death. So just like a modern tombstone today, with a round top, we have the name of the deceased, and on some tombstones today we have the birth and death date. Here we don't have the birth and death date, we have rather the age at which the deceased died. Dr. Bob.